guys and welcome to Hattie Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic and that is mononucleosis. So let's get started. So what is mononucleosis? Mononucleosis is an infectious illness that is usually caused by the Epstein-Barr virus, which is also commonly known as EBV. The disease itself is also commonly known as infectious mononucleosis or the kissing disease. The virus that causes mononucleosis, which is EBV, is transmitted through saliva, so one can get it through kissing, but can also be exposed to it by sharing a glass or food utensils with someone who has the disease. Most of us are exposed to EBV at some point while we're growing up, and infants and young kids infected with EBV usually have very mild symptoms or none at all. But infected teens and young adults often develop the symptoms that define mononucleosis. So from this definition of mononucleosis, we get that it's also commonly known as infectious mononucleosis or the kissing disease. And it's given this name, the kissing disease, because this virus is actually transmitted through saliva or the sharing of utensils or glasses or even food from one infected individual to another. So something very interesting about mononucleosis is that at some point during our childhood, the majority of us have actually been exposed to EBV. And usually infants and kids have very mild symptoms or may develop none at all, but the teens and adults usually suffer more prominent symptoms. So now that we know what the basics of mononucleosis is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So as we mentioned in the slide before, the Epstein-Barr virus spreads through bodily fluids, usually saliva, which is why one can get it through kissing. One may also contract the disease if they share food, drinks or silverware with a person who has it, or rarely if an infected person coughs or sneezes near you, because there is a small bit of saliva that's actually released during that sneeze or that cough. So if someone who has mononucleosis uses an object like a fork or a spoon, the virus is probably still contagious as long as the object is still moist. So as long as there is moisture, which means saliva, on that utensil, the disease will be transmittable. The Epstein-Barr virus can also be spread through blood and semen, and it is unusual, but one may get mononucleosis from medical procedures such as blood transfusions and organ transplants or through sexual contact. So the main bodily fluid that actually spreads the disease is saliva, but in some very few cases, the disease was actually determined to be caused by an individual coming into contact with either blood or semen samples from an infected individual. So moving on, let's explore some signs and symptoms of mononucleosis. So because the virus has an incubation period of approximately four to six weeks, the typical signs and symptoms of infectious mononucleosis only usually appear after this four to six week period. So the most common symptoms of mononucleosis are a high fever, swollen lymph glands in the neck and the armpits, and a sore throat. Other signs and symptoms may include a headache, fatigue, muscle weakness, a rash, which usually consists of flat pink or purple spots on the skin or in the mouth, swollen tonsils, night sweats, and a swollen liver or spleen or both. So the main signs and symptoms of this disease will be that high fever, the swollen lymph nodes, especially in the neck and armpit area, and that sore throat. But patients may actually suffer from spleen and liver enlargement, as well as inflamed or red tonsils, headache, malaise, fatigue, and a loss of appetite, sore throat and reddening of the throat, those swollen lymph nodes again, especially in the neck and armpit area. They may actually have a cough as well, and they may also suffer some nausea or vomiting. The diagnosis of mononucleosis. So the doctor will assess the child's signs and symptoms to make a diagnosis, they will especially check for the swollen lymph nodes in the neck region and the armpit region and signs of an enlarged spleen or liver because as we mentioned in the slide before, some of these children may have the enlargement of the spleen and liver. 
So blood tests may also be used to detect antibodies that the body makes to fight the Epstein Barr virus. And this can also be helpful in the diagnosis. So we're going to look for those anti-EBV antibodies, which will tell us that the body is actually trying to fight an active EBV infection. So the blood report can also be helpful because it will also indicate a high number of white blood cells, specifically lymphocytes, that indicate an EBV infection. So usually we have an increase in the lymphocytes when the body has a current viral infection. So in addition to detecting the antibodies against EBV, we can also look for an increase in the lymphocyte levels. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of infectious mononucleosis. So infectious mononucleosis is generally self-limiting, so only symptomatic or supportive treatments are used. So the patient is advised to get plenty of rest and fluids, especially early in the illness when the symptoms are most severe. For relief from the fever and aching muscles, they can be administered acetaminophen or ibuprofen. In some cases, people who have a mononucleosis infection get a secondary infection, such as strep throat, sinus infections, or tonsillitis. And in these cases, these patients may need treatment with antibiotics such as amoxicillin and other penicillin derivatives. And that brings us to the end of this video on infectious mononucleosis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notification so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.